What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. I'm back, back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So this week I'm going to teach you how to draw a barn with a gambrel roof. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So, uh, you know, I, I realize that maybe some of you won't necessarily be drawing a lot of barns, but uh, the principles that we talk about in this video can be applied to a lot of different building types. So uh, the way that you're going to do this is you're going to start off kind of like we usually do when we're drawing something that we're going to extrude and you're just going to draw a rectangular canvas. So in this case I'm going to draw something that's 15 feet wide, 20 feet high, and hit the enter key. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rough out. So actually the first thing I want to say is the way that we're going to do this is we're not going to draw the entire face of the barn we're going to draw half of it and then mirror it with a component this is a common way of drawing things that are symmetrical so um, like what we're going to do so the way a gambrel roof works is it's a roof that goes up a fair amount like it's fairly steep and then it comes across so in another portion that isn't as steep so it kind of comes down here and then it goes more steep right here and uh, so we're just going to draw half of a barn face basically is what we're going to do and then we're going to use the offset tool to offset that to a certain thickness in this case I'm going to do that at six inches and you can see how that offsets everything here and we don't necessarily want everything offset so what we're going to do is just come in here with the line tools and just kind of close this face off that we drew um, and actually you may want to actually hold on just a second so you may want to go ahead and extend this down a little bit so just uh, continue this line out maybe another six inches or so and then just close it off this way just so you've got kind of an overlap right here so once you get this all cleaned up basically what you've got is you've got a building and then you've got a roof that we're going to extrude and we're going to use the push pull tool to extrude those things all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this into a component so drag your mouse across it right click and click make component and just call it barn half go ahead and say yes and so now you've got half of your barn and then what you're going to do is you're going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this so just uh, click on the corner of this with the move tool active and tap that control key and then uh, you're going to use either the scale tool or you can use the flip along tool um, in order to flip that and then move it back together so now what you've got is you've got your full barn You've got your full barn piece in here right now and remember since these are components anything i do to this this side is going to happen to this side as well so we're going to use the push pull tool to extrude our roof out a little bit so probably one foot six inches is what's going to work here you can erase this line and then once you've kind of extruded this on the front side you can go over to the back side and extrude your barn out so in this case i'm going to say my barn's 40 feet deep um, so we extrude our actual barn building and then you come in here and you extrude your roof back to this back wall and then just extrude it again another one foot six inches off the back side so now you've got a roof on here that extends that you've got a little bit of an overhang on each side just like this so and one other thing we're going to do is some barns are a little more decorative in that this the top part extends forward further than the rest of it so all we're going to do is we're going to drag our mouse across this piece right here and we're going to use the move tool to move this forward and probably the best way to do this is to tap the right mouse button um, so that you lock so that you lock your line along the green axis but then just come in here and just type in whatever that distance is that you want this to kind of overhang so in this case I'm going to say six feet and so now what I've got is I've got a barn that has your roof here and then it's also got some additional overhang in here and then the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to use the symmetry of this building to come in here and model all the uh, doors and windows and stuff and uh, I'll probably put those in I'll probably put those in but I'll speed it up um, all right, so you just come in here and you draw your doors to the dimensions you want so 8 foot comma 5 foot 
you can use the offset tool to uh, kind of create the different borders and stuff like that in here that you want. Uh, you can do a lot of different things in here, but um, it's all kind of personal preference stuff. But remember, use the symmetry on this as much as you as much as you can, so that you don't have to model things multiple times. All right, so once you've modeled in your windows and your doors, um, and again, this is all kind of personal preference stuff. Um, I tried to do my stuff with components and everything, um, just so if I had to come in here and change one of these doors, I could change the others as well. But you can see how everything repeated across the two components, or uh, the two halves of your barn. Like you can see how you've got your doors over here, as well as the way you've got your doors over here. Um, so, so anyway, now, you know, the one thing that you may want to do is you may not want everything to be 100% symmetrical. So you may have a couple pieces, like for example, if you just want a door on this side that doesn't go on the other side, uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. The first would be to model everything that you could possibly want everything that you could possibly want that's going to mirror across these two and then you could right click on one of these and make it unique so that's one way you could do that is model everything that's going to be symmetrical and then just make it so these aren't copies of the same component anymore they're each unique copies but um, the other thing you could do especially if you're not doing like a smart model or anything like that it's just more of an illustration so you can just come in here on top of this just like this and draw a door on top of that and so what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to come in here to the components section because I made this particular door a component um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm outside of this barn right here and then I'm gonna go to the components section of my tray and just pick the door that I drew and just uh, drop it in on the face just like this so that way I've got this door over here that is sitting here in my model but at the same time it's not mirrored because it's not actually inside the component and uh, you know one thing I do have in here that I don't necessarily like I'll come in here and make this a group but one thing I don't necessarily like is that these doors don't line up exactly. So I'm going to come in here and scale these up so that they match a little bit better. Just like that. The last thing we're going to do in this model is just come in here and clean up a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm not actually going to go through adding materials to this in this video. Um, you know, if that's something you guys really want to see, let me leave a comment below and let me know. Um, it's definitely, uh, you, you can definitely uh, go in there and use the paint bucket tool to color this up, but um, I'm not going to make you watch me do that. Um, but one thing you are going to want to do is, since you did this with components, you can see how you've got this line down the middle and then a line along the top here, and then this little line in here as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in there with the erase tool in hide mode and just hide those lines so all you got to do to do that um, you see how down at the bottom it says shift equals hide so just activate that erase tool and then hold the shift key and drag it across the lines you want to hide just like this so those lines are still in there but now you can't see them so you see how now you've got a nice smooth face on here and you can come in here and you can do the same thing on the back side if you want uh, you can't erase it because that'll erase your face but you can hide it just by holding that shift key so um, you can go in there and hide those lines so everything looks a little bit better. So anyway, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Let me know if you like this kind of video. Um, I know uh, maybe barns aren't necessarily your thing, but a lot of people use SketchUp for architectural type stuff. And a lot of these principles really kind of uh, translate. And it really helps you kind of get in that mindset of only modeling half of something. So you can actually cut your modeling in half that way. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you enjoyed this, if there's something you would like to see different. I'd just love to have a SketchUp conversation with you guys. That's one of my favorite things about this channel. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, make sure you click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, that just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp videos. Even if it's only a dollar a month, every little bit helps. In any case, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.